First of all, I would like to apologize for not being able to attend today's Resilience Forum in person. I would like to welcome you all to this event, which will allow us to take stock of achievements in taking forward the Resilience Agenda and keep up the momentum to boost further work in this area. We are glad to see that resilience is high on the agenda of many of our partners who have joined us today to share their experience in this field. Building resilience is building the ability to withstand, to adapt, and to quickly recover from stresses and shocks of countries, communities, and of every single citizen. As Nelson and Mandela put it once, the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Because whether we like it or not, we know that we are going sometimes to fall. Unexpected natural catastrophes, food crises, or economic shocks can seriously undermine the results of our work in our partner countries. Strengthening resilience is at the core of successful humanitarian and development policies. Our cooperation policies are built with a particular focus on peace and state building, addressing climate change and disaster risk reduction, food security and social protection. We need to equip countries with the means to prepare for potential shocks, preventing the worst aspect of crisis, tackling the root causes, but also responding quickly when crises occur. This exactly approach the EU is taking from the Sahel through the Agir Initiative and the Horn of Africa through SHARE Initiative as some of most affected areas. There, the European Union has and is still playing a major role. Just to mention one example, last year we launched a project to improve food security and build resilience to drought in lowland areas of Ethiopia. The EU is already doing its best to address the immediate impact of drought through its humanitarian assistance. Now, with this new program, we can also help Ethiopian people in the longer term, providing them with cash and food for the most vulnerable ones, promoting nutritional diversity through local production of vegetables or milk, helping them manage their water resources and strengthening livestock health. But we want to scale up previous efforts for resilience building at different levels and within an expanded range of countries and regions. This means going beyond the share and the Agir initiatives in the Sahel, the Global Climate Change Alliance and intra-ACP disaster risk management programs. I am happy to be able to confirm that resilience building will continue to be a priority in our future programming. We have already earmarked 1.5 billion euros to develop and implement national resilience strategies in the Sahel and West Africa in the 2014-2020 period. We recognize that building resilience consists of long-term processes that must be led by our partner countries. And there are good examples of this. The Nigerians, Nourish, uh, no, no, Nourish Nigerians, an innovative project or triple N project of the government of Niger to strengthen community resilience and fines against malnutrition is a perfect demonstration of this idea in practice and a Nigerian solution to Nigerian problem. We do not see resilience as an isolated objective, but rather an aspect to be mainstream throughout our programming and project implementation processes. 
We expect the application of the resilience agenda to lead to a reduction in humanitarian needs and more equitable and sustainable development gains in the long term. Both my colleague, Commissioner Kristalina Georgieva, and myself have a strong determination on this. We have both been in rooms with children who were so undernourished that they could not even cry. And we simply cannot accept and tolerate it. I look forward to a future in which the humanitarian and development aid link is stronger than ever before. I believe it's also very important for us to further deepen our cooperation with EU member states and other partners on the implementation of the resilience agenda and see together where our actions can complement each other. This will allow us to build better synergies between actions with a view to achieve more sustainable results. Well, we need to recognize the need to further increase collectively the resilience knowledge and evidence base through lessons, learning and research. I am sure that today's forum will contribute to this joint objective. And I'm sorry again that not to be in this forum. I believe the resilience agenda is one of the most important agenda in development and humanitarian aid today. Thank you.